with you. Welcome to a new audio drama series called I'm Here With You. This series is co-produced by Anram Mardi and Lauren Pepperell in Arabic and English as a part of the new Conversations UK-Egypt Creative Partnership Program. For more details, check out the link in the description. If you're not already wearing headphones, we recommend putting some on to become fully transported into the sonic landscape of each story. Hello, this is the Mental Health and Crisis Support Helpline. First, let me reassure you everything said during this call is confidential. Please feel comfortable to speak freely. My name is Noah and I'm here with you. Hello, this is the Mental Health and Crisis Support Helpline. My name is Noah. May I ask your name? Layla. How are you, Layla? What happened? My snow globe fell on the floor and broke. There's shattered glass everywhere. I feel stupid. I couldn't look after it. Where are you now? I'm at home. Laying on the floor by the broken glass. Is it possible to get up and move away from the broken glass safely? Anyone else at home you can ask for help? I always need help. But right now, I just need someone who'll listen. But I never know who to ask. I'm here with you and listening. Today, I asked my mum to move this snow globe away from me. She heard what I said and ignored me as if I'd never asked. She just gazed at me for a while and then shut the door and left. As a child, I was really mischievous. I was one of those kids who'd climb walls or spend all day doing handstands. I'd walk on my hands aimlessly from room to room, breaking everything. I lived in a big house full of laughter and joking around. On my sixth birthday, my mum gave me a big snow globe ornament that plays music when you wind it up. Inside, a doll spun slowly, her arms raised and gently curved like a butterfly. Ballet dancer. That day, I knew what I wanted. I wanted to be a ballet dancer. My parents were very enthusiastic about my new passion, especially because I was their only daughter. Within days, I started auditioning at ballet schools for children. Despite my young age and the tough competition, I was accepted quickly. My life began from that moment on. I was different from all the other new kids. On the first day, they seemed scared. But I entered that ballet hall with a huge grin on my face, each footstep full of confidence. It was only later that I learned what lies behind the life of those beautiful butterflies that people love to watch. I learned the suffering of those exquisite creatures which capture hearts and minds and the pain they feel. 
My injuries began from the first day. But I never complained once. I endured the pain in a way I can't now. I had fallen in love with wooden floors, with the bar, and with big mirrors, where in its reflection I could see myself growing up. Years passed and I did nothing but dance. In the meantime, I avoided studying and never went to family gatherings. All my friends were ballet dancers. My family only ever argued with me over my schoolwork. My parents would try to convince me to focus on my education and do well at school. But I never listened. All I cared about was my weight, my appearance, and making sure I looked slender and elegant enough. All I cared about was myself. I treated the ballet hall like a home. It was the only place where I felt comfortable enough to express myself. I spent so much time there that I started to feel like a stranger in my own house and only went home at night to sleep. I sacrificed everything for the sake of one thing. Do you think what's broken can be fixed? It depends how badly it's broken and if we have the capacity to fix it. What if it's glass? Maybe. Dreams? Possibly. A spinal column? What happened? I fell. Five years ago on stage in front of everyone, wearing a shiny ballet costume. I was about to finish my last jump. I leapt in the air gracefully as the music lifted me off the ground. I felt weightless, as if angels were carrying me towards the sky. Suddenly, sound evaporated. The floor closed in on me and the angels disappeared. Then a sound I'll never forget. My back breaking. I knew immediately it was an injury that wouldn't be solved by the ice packs we use after rehearsals. What should have been the sound of clapping was replaced with screams and piercing noises. Ambulance! Someone call the ambulance! Me and all my dreams lay on the floor. Music turned into white noise and screaming. My eyes kept blinking, open and closed. Next thing I know, I open my eyes and I'm in a hospital bed surrounded by people. Every day the number of visitors dropped. I only had one question. When will I be able to walk? I returned home in a wheelchair. I couldn't get my head around it. I couldn't get my head around needing someone's help to move. How is it possible that this is the sound of moving today? What do you mean partial paralysis? I was so shook up, I began hitting my legs, trying to make them move. Days dragged on, full of visitors from the ballet school passing by to check in on me. I'd been in hospital for months. 
their lives had continued without me. And all I'd hear was, How are you? How have you been? What a shame. They tell me all about their latest news and achievements. It made me feel like I'd missed out on years. They'd even talk about things I'd never heard of before. All that was left for them to do was dance next to my bed and really gloat at my expense. Get out! I never want to see you again! What had been a daily schedule of dance practice turned into a daily schedule of medication. A calendar of ballet performances turned into a calendar of operations and physio appointments. I was only ever given two sentences as reassurance. You'll be okay. It's just a matter of time. How? How can someone's story end in one move? The narrator just went silent. My body was the vehicle I used to tell people stories. How can I share them now? Or even express how I feel? I'm sorry. I lost my balance to dance and in life. I'm sorry I failed my family. Sorry I failed myself. For sure they now all see me as worthless. Maybe you do too. Definitely not. The issue is balance, not you. It wasn't your fault. Life doesn't need to end after an accident. I'll always hear people say life ends, but dancing continues. They were right. You could say that sentence was written about me. My life ended and dancing continues. All the other dancers are still dancing, of course. They've probably trained a new generation by now. Ballet shows are still broadcast on TV. The audience still tear up every time they see the death of the swan. Dancing continues. But my life ended. I've been telling myself for five years, everything will turn out all right. I'll recover and be even stronger than I was before. I'll stand on my own two feet. Even though I know it's impossible. I feel trapped in my wheelchair. My mum spends all day helping me. She makes food, changes my clothes, takes me to the doctors and to physiotherapy, even though there's no use. She does it all without saying a single word. She seems so weighed down with worry that even walking from my bedroom door to my bedside takes her ages. I never see her laughing or even smile. I can't remember if she's always been that way and I haven't noticed. Or if it's my life ending that's left her so sad. Days go by without my father ever coming into my room. He says he's busy. But I know he's worn out. I know I've become a burden on everyone around me. But what can I do? It wasn't my choice that this happened. It wasn't my fault. Or maybe it was. I don't know. I'm now 23 years old and have no friends. I have no goals, no boyfriend, and I don't have the energy to go to the bathroom by myself. And I don't have the 
courage to end it all. Would you believe me if I told you I'm not sure if I smashed this snow globe on purpose or not? Recently, I've started to avoid looking at it. Every time I saw the doll inside, I felt jealous. How come she can dance and I can't? So I threw her on the floor. The glass broke, but the doll still looks perfect. No, she's not perfect at all. This episode was originally written in Arabic by Anram Mardi and produced and translated into English by Lauren Pepperell. Special thanks goes to Mahmoud Sagir for the sound design and to the voice actors Isa Maida, who plays the role of Leila, and Tahir Shah, who plays Noah. Thanks also to theater groups El Aada in Alexandria and Alleyway Radical Theater in London, and to podcasting platforms Pumit Kashakil and the Green Room Podcast Alexandria. And to you for listening.